Hey, every <coughs> hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to fly an ultralight aircraft. Ultralight aircraft, or ultralights for short, are little tiny airplanes that are so small even a baby could fly them. They could, but they shouldn't, because babies have other more important things to do, like poop their baby diapers or puke their baby pukes. All babies seem to do nowadays is poop and puke. When I was a baby, things were different. I had to change my own diaper and I hated doing it, so I quickly learned to poop in a urinal like a real boy. My grandpapa built me a special little ladder so that I could crawl up and rest my rear on the bowl of the urinal when I was not but three weeks old. I had a strict upbringing, but I wouldn't have it any other way. And before you ask, yes, we had a urinal in our house instead of a toilet. That's what grandpapa wanted and so that's what he built. Who am I to question grandpapa's authority? I won't be the one to do it, that's for sure. I learned my lesson long ago. Anyway, flying an ultralight is great. You don't need any special license or anything. You can just do it if you want, and baby, I want. There's nothing so great as the feeling I get when I'm up in the sky in my ultralight flying. It's truly incredible. I'm so free and mobile and alone up there. And even if somebody or something like a goose tries to come near me, I keep a can of pressurized goose spray in the cockpit with me at all times. Whoops, I probably should bleep cockpit. My bad. The goose spray is a chemical repellent that not only works on gooses and other flying birds, but also on land-based birds like penguins and emus and chickens. I've tried it on a lot of different birds, and there hasn't been a single one that has wanted to stick close to me after receiving a face full of my goose spray. It's homemade, you know? I made it myself. It took me years to finalize the recipe, years of work and thousands of dollars, but I'm glad I took the time and money and effort to do it, because the goose repellents you find in stores just won't do. I needed something that was sure to keep those birds off me while I was up in the sky. I know that the sky is their territory and I don't belong there. I knew that I would have to fight for their respect and that's just what I did. Now, gooses mostly leave me be and let me do my flying in their domain. I wish I could explain what it's like to be flying one of these bad boys, one of these little guys one of these little tiny treats. All I can say is that I love it. When I'm up here, I really get a chance to think about things. I can think about things in a way that's just impossible back on the ground. There are so many distractions down there. People screaming at me, babies puking all over, dogs barking, 5G technologies, fluoride in the water, cell phones tracking your every move. You know that there's at least one man looking through the camera on your cell phone at all times, right? Even at night. Even when your phone's in a drawer or something, there's still somebody looking through the camera into the blackness. They love it. They eat it up. But when I'm flying, all those distractions are gone. The gooses used to distract, but not anymore. So it's just me and my thoughts up there. It's so peaceful, so serene, so windy. <sighs> I can think about anything up here. I can think about stuff that has already happened, or stuff that will happen in the future, or stuff that definitely will never happen. I'm all by myself, so I can even think about really personal stuff, like what my favorite noodle shape is. It's probably just regular long noodles. Or I can wonder about what my first crush might be doing. I bet she's having fun, and she's married to a hunk, and she never thinks about me at all, and even if she does, she probably thinks about me in a way that's mean. Like, I bet if she thinks about me at at all, she probably thinks about the time I got diarrhea on the bus and blamed it on a bird that had flown into the bus through the open window during our field trip to the wheat field. The bird stayed in the bus for the entire trip back. Nobody could get it to fly out of the open windows. It just kept flapping and screeching. At one point, it perched on the back of my seat and pooped. It didn't poop on me, just near me, but it was near enough to scare me so much that I diarrheaed. That's all it takes sometimes, just a good old-fashioned fright, and the juice starts a flowing. That's all it took then. The bird pooped, and then I pooped, and it was a loud one. I mean, there were a lot of intermittent pockets of air within my colon, and they came out of me with loud popping and clapping and splashing sounds. The kids around me, including my then crush, turned to look at me when the terrible sound came trumpeting out of my hinder, and I didn't know what to do. My first thought, because the bird was still sitting next to my head and it had pooped a long gray streak down the front of the green bus seat, was to say, It was the bird. Look, the bird pooped. It must be the one with the diarrhea. <laughs> I remember seeing my crush look over to the bird and its stripe of excrement, and then look back at me. I'll never forget how sad she looked when her eyes met. 
She didn't say anything, she just slowly shook her head and turned back around. <coughs> so yeah, I bet if she's thinking about me at all, she's thinking about that. Up here is where I get my best thinking done. I actually try not to think that much when I'm on the ground. I try to save it for when I'm up here. Sometimes I do stuff when I'm on the ground specifically so that I can think about it when I'm flying. It's a little embarrassing to admit, but sometimes I go to the library and look up computer images of extremely nude ladies, and I just look at them for a second before running away. But a second is all it takes for me to save their nudeness in my mind. Then when I'm up here, alone, without a single goose in sight, I recall the intense nudeness of the images that I saw on the library computer, and I laugh and laugh. I just can't believe how nude some people are sometimes. What a delight. What an extravagance. I wonder what it's like to be naked and have your picture taken on purpose. I imagine it's much different than when your nude picture is taken by a bunch of older guys in the locker room under the threat of punches. I guess I wasn't technically nude in the pictures, I was covered in wet socks. You see, if you get a boy's sock wet and it's not on a boy's foot, you can press that sock to a surface and it will likely stick. At least that's what happened when they put their wet socks on me, on my weak and trembling body. They covered their socks and spit and then pressed them to my face and back and wherever else my skin was and most of them stayed where they put them. Then they took pictures. Then they showed the pictures to the principal and somehow I was the one who got suspended and then later expelled. But I didn't get expelled because of the pictures. I got expelled because I got caught cheating in science class. The teacher assigned us an egg-based assignment, one of several really, that was to test our engineering skills. We were to create a cushion for the egg so that it could withstand a drop onto the ground from the top of the school's roof without breaking. It sounds simple enough, but the teacher, Mr. Kerr, said that the egg's cushion could not extend more than two inches from the exterior of the egg. Also, we had to supply our own materials, eggs included. I won't bore you with all the details, but the reason I got expelled was because I used a frog's egg rather than the standard chicken egg. I tried to explain that nowhere in the homework assignment did it list what species of beast from which the egg must be harvested, but Mr. Curd wasn't willing to listen to reason. He said that I had cheated. He said that I had made a mockery of science and the school and the idea of learning as a whole. I'd never meant to make a mockery of those things. I just wanted to put the frog's eggs I had to good use. <sighs> There wasn't anything I could do to make him or any of the other members of the faculty understand my intention. The entire school staff, even the students, voted unanimously that I be expelled. Never understood why they let the students vote. Usually it was just a staff decision. I guess they wanted to show me that every person at the school wanted me gone. I didn't try enrolling in another school after that. I knew that none in the area would have me anyway. I just decided that I would learn the rest of my knowledge myself, and that's a big part of why I'm up here, flying. I get to think, and I think thinking leads to learning. I teach myself stuff all the time up here. I've taught myself how to sew, how to field dress wild game, how to start a fire without a match, how to cauterize a wound that I got while trying to learn how to field dress wild game while flying. If you ask me, the sky is the world's greatest classroom. <coughs> All classes should be taught in an ultralight aircraft. I think literacy rates would greatly improve, test scores would go up, people would be happier and smarter and more knowledgeable. You can learn pretty much anything up here. The only thing I've had trouble learning while flying is how to cook. Sure, I've cooked a ton of stuff up here, but the limited space and heat sources make some types of cooking more difficult. I've been able to successfully make jackrabbit and onion stew using the heat from the engine and the jackrabbit that I had just chopped up with the propeller on accident. I've made several fruit salads. I've cooked and eaten over 70 pancakes while flying this little daisy. I've even made pork steaks up here without much trouble. But when it comes to baking or deep fat frying, things get a bit trickier. The engine does produce a good amount of heat, but it just gets sucked away by the constant breezes and gusts that live up here amongst the clouds. I've tried to construct a box in which I could put pastries or cakes or other bakeables and then mount it to the top of the engine to collect heat, but it never gets hot enough, so I've never learned to bake. It's the same with deep frying. I've tried every frying medium you can think of. Olive oil, lard, shark grease, pigeon oil, potato bug liquid, everything that people use to fry stuff, but it just doesn't get hot enough. Yeah, I've been able to confit some delicious figs up here, but if... <laughs> 
But if I were to try to make a basket of french fries, I'd be able to present you with little more than soggy, warmed through potato sticks that reek of pigeon oil and taste of nothing but salt and raw potato and again, pigeon oil. So an ultralight isn't the perfect classroom, but it's the best that I've ever visited. I can honestly say that I've learned more while piling an ultralight aircraft than I had in the six years of my formal education combined. I wouldn't trade my time up here for anything. I guess that's not totally true. I would definitely give up flying an ultralight if I were able to go back in time and not diarrhea my pants on the bus all those years ago. Or if I couldn't do that, I would at least go back and come up with something better than blaming my wet bottom butter on a bird. I know now that that was the wrong thing to do. I think about that poor bird all the time. You should never lie about birds. I'll spray them in the beak and eyes with my homemade deterrent, but I won't lie about them. 